Today, I'm going to talk to you about how everything is a wall and how that is the single most important thing you can do in PUBG Mobile. That and be really, really good at throwing things a long way. <laughs> uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! The theory of walls. Boys and girls, we're going to talk a lot about walls today and I'm going to show you why uh, a lot of people lose games because they're not moving with purpose when they're driving vehicles or they're not moving with purpose when they're getting into the map. You see how I drove to a rock because the rocks cover. Good. That's really important. Driving in the right place on top of hills, uh, moving around the map to the right kind of altitude. It's all huge in terms of whether or not you win gun gunfights. And as a player who is not the best in the world and I've got to take every advantage I can to get across the line, this kind of gameplay and this kind of thinking will really help me get wins. Um, basically, the age-old ethos of PUBG Mobile is hardcover to hardcover. I've talked about this before. I've done videos on it. And as long as you're moving hardcover to hardcover, you're minimizing a lot of the risks. You don't just run around in open fields. But we've moved past that. Now we want to talk about walls. Watch this clip here. I'm moving to a, uh, a flare drop, an airdrop, and there's a car popping up on my southeast. I've got to get to this hill. I've got to get to the highest ridge line I can. And that is the wall right here. Even though it's just a hill, this is as good as standing behind a rock, okay? Uh, it's good as standing behind a wall and strafing out. This is a literal, this is an actual wall, right? Um, just to make the point. That's the same, but the wall is very, is it's nothing more than a barrier between you and the enemy. You want to constantly be resetting your engagements and you want to constantly be coming out from cover. Okay, so we're cool with that. A big part of this comes in as we start rotating in late games. Watch how I drive all the way up to the edge of this upside down bowl. And then it's not a very good like hill, but we use it and we're peeking and ducking and getting under cover. We use it and we get the clears. Another simple way of taking advantage of this kind of territory is when you're running the crests and there's not a lot of cover. Um, you can see he's going to lie down in the grass to be invisible. I can lie down too. Puts a bit of cover between me and him and then I pop up. I'm using that like a wall. I'm using it exactly the same as the wall that I had on Miramar. We were clearing those guys late. Now, this is an example what I want you to think about here is as the circle shuts down and, the, and they get smaller and smaller, you get these killing fields open up. And these are great opportunities to make early rotations. Um, when you have a, a ridge line, you either want to be at the very, very top of it or the very, very bottom of it. The worst thing that can possibly happen in these late game situations is that you are in the killing field, in the middle of the elevation. Look at this. Look at this wide open hill here. There is no safety here. Someone is coming down this hill. They are going to be very, very visible and they're going to be in a horrible position. And then you get to the flat and it's just, again, wide open road. What a great driver. This gives you situations where we rotated early and we rotated hard and Mr. Ouija sees people coming down that hill and there are no walls there for these guys. The, the walls are gone. The walls are all gone. And that's unfortunate, but this is what I mean. Everything is a wall. If you are not getting behind it, then you're giving someone else access to free shots at you. And then as we rotate out, what I'm gonna do is look at the circle and you've got to imagine that as the blue zone pushes in, different parts of the map become more and more important. This looks like a terrible place to be because the whole backside of this ridge is taken up by open space and anyone can hit us. But when the circle pushes in, there's no one there to hit us. We've already cleared that compound. And we come in just at the top of the ridge line, and that guy there, he's not behind the wall. He's not at the top of the ridge line at all. He's actually in a really horrible spot. Everything is a wall. Hey. Um, this is a great example. See where that guy's parked his minibus? Like it's that is a horrible spot. Everyone in the world can see it. And also, you are so far away from hardcover to get to that barn and between the barn and his bus is a long way. If he wants to pull out of his engagement now, he can't. Look where I parked my car and he's gone down. So I now move up. I now own the top and then I move back around and I'm using this ridge line. This is the wall. Hey, I duck, reset, 
do it again. Then there's a joker way, way, way away who wants to actually uh, take out the wheels on my car. That's great. He starts hitting it. Uh, I'm going to get my heels and all that in. But I park my car below the ridge line. So it's very, very easy when you start doing this stuff to manipulate the topography. It's, it's a bit gimmicky third person the way this works, but it is the game we're playing. And if you want to play it well and you want to use everything to your advantage, then you need to start making sure that when you move around the map, you're putting yourself in these kind of positions. You can see he is up there. And we get the clear, and again, we poke from behind the wall. It's always about the wall. This is a very dodgy one. These guys didn't miss very often. Um, Faz is knocked. I'm trying to get a knock here so I can get down and knock Faz. I hit that guy only a chest shot. Jeez, every time I pop, I get hit. Like, bang, 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 bang. Bangity, bang, bang, bang. Like, seriously? Not not even a little bit? Righto. Just standing up, squaring away with M4s. No problems. We're going to play damage for distance here. Happy days, okay? These guys are going to push in. They feel very confident. They're obviously happy with their M416 sprays. And I've got a barrel. So I don't want to be engaging in this long-range stuff. I want to keep just using that tiny little burst at the ridge line. I don't even, like, aim that. I'm just hip-firing. I'm just trying to take a little bit off at a time. And I keep moving further away, creating more space, using that barrier, using that wall. He didn't even have time to... He didn't obviously heal the damage I did to him earlier. That's it's it's all about using the walls correctly. This is a stream I did with Ouija. You can see that someone is coming in on the flank, and I am so worried about I'm it. Watching these guys, I'm, I think they're going to try and try and third party. I'm just busting ass, just okay, busting right ass straight to the top of this ridge line. Yeah, because this is the map. This is the map, right here. I didn't have much vest left, no, so I got hammered, but Ouija comes and cleans up. Nice, nice, the, nice. If those guys had a got, yeah, got no vest. that ridge, no <laughs> we had lost the game. And that's how important those kind of positions are. The wall is absolutely everything. I'm going to show you some highlights from a game that I played the other day, a solos game. And this is an interesting solos game because the same thing happened has happened to me now three times. Um playing solos, doing this. But it's going to give you a great example of how much attention I pay to the positioning in the game. And it's also going to show you how, if you stick with this, when you make late game rotations, it's going to be tremendously helpful. Um, this has nothing to do with it. I just thought it was funny. There's a glider behind me. So this guy's coming to go get the glider and his bike, and the bike's got no front wheel. So he literally can't turn. <laughs> he just gets stuck in the middle of the road and walloped. Poor guy, I feel so bad for him. Anyway, moving right along. Um, we take his M24. Look where I am here, okay? Look at where I am on the circle. I am exactly on the edge of the circle. I am waiting here because this ridge line will be able to overlook these two blokes trying to rotate in and take this crate drop. And if you, if you start using this kind of analogy for yourself, like where is the ridge that is next to the circle's edge? You will start grinding all kinds of kills that are so unfair. Like these guys have to come down to the, the mountain. Like there's only a little bit of space here. Uh, I'm under this ridge line, which is my wall. And that guy's in an open field and that's a killing field. I get to pick and I've got a bolt action sniper rifle and obviously I'm only poking up when I've got a shot in the clip and that's how you get those clears very, very quickly. And then we move away all the way to the end and I'll show you this because I think I've, I've ran the point home. This is the last guy. At first you might think this isn't that dodgy. Um, this just looks like a straight up uh, he just just won the gunfight. Look at when he starts firing at me. Now, he hits me as soon as... He's shooting me around that corner. So he's... And he's not hitting headshots. It's all body shots. I then watch the death replay. If you were... If I, this is me, watch how he doesn't go to the angle and start third party peeking the corner. He's tracking me, looking at me through the box. And then he sees me over there and starts pre-firing exactly as I come out. I thought that was suspicious, so I reported it, and obviously uh, the next day I woke up, hit the mail, feedback on player report, 
the player was cheating. And the reason I didn't see that the night before was I immediately closed the iPad afterwards and just went, this is bollocks. Um, one other thing, we've just started streaming. We're streaming in 1440p now. The graphics look incredible. Uh, everything is schmick. Um, the streams are really taking off. Lots and lots of people jumping on and having a good time. So we're doing those. I'm trying to do those on a regular schedule. A little bit of home stuff at the moment is making that difficult. But watch out for the notifications and make sure you click notifications are enabled. Like just click the little bell next to the subscribe button and uh, you'll get notified when I go live. We're also doing a lot more videos, a lot more stuff coming up. So stick around a lot more of this kind of content. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, please subscribe, like the videos and recommend it to your buddies if you think it's a bit of fun. Till next time, bye for now.